thanks Ben for the introduction. See lots of familiar faces here. So today I will present joint work with Jorge Bayer, Christian Muse, and Sheila McIlwraith on finite LTL synthesis as planning. So first of all, what is software synthesis? Synthesis is the problem of constructing software from user intent, and the user intent can come in different ways, from demonstration or examples, from natural language instructions, or from formal specifications, as is the case of our work. Synthesis is an important task. Just think about all the amount of intelligent devices surrounding us. Everybody out there should be able to tell the machines what to do. Synthesis is often interpreted as a two-player game, where the environment player controls a set of X variables, and the agent player controls a set of Y variables. And then we have a specification that tells us what are the rules of the game and what are the goals of the agent player. And so the game goes as follows. In each turn, the environment player selects a subset of X variables, and the agent responds by selecting a subset of Y variables. And so a play is just a sequence of turns between the agent and environment players, such that um, it's finite. And then a play is winning if this finite sequence satisfies the specification. And so the goal is for the agent player to find a winning strategy. So then the problem is, how do we describe the specification? In our work, we use temporal, linear temporal logic on finite traces, for short, LTLF. So LTLF is a compelling language to express temporally extended properties in finite state traces. The syntax of LTLF compresses atomic propositions, logic connectives, and temporal operators like next, until, eventually, always, release. So then the truth of an LTLF formula is evaluated over finite traces. In this example over here, we have a formula that reads always, if then, the next y. And the following finite state trace satisfies the formula because in each state, for each state that uh, satisfies x, it happens that in the following step, y also holds. In the rest of the presentation, we will exploit this property. For a given LTLF formula phi, we can construct a non-deterministic finite state automaton that accepts a finite trace if and only if the finite trace satisfies, satisfies the LTLF formula. Now, we are ready to introduce our problem. An LTLF specification is a triplet of environment variables X, agent variables Y, and an LTLF formula. And so a strategy is a function that maps finite sequences of subsets of X variables to a subset of Y variables. And so a strategy is winning if for each infinite sequence of subsets of X variables, it happens that if the agent plays according to F, it's able to generate one finite play that satisfies the specification phi. Then we consider two different problems. LTLF realizability is a problem of determining whether there exists one winning strategy for the agent. And synthesis is the problem of computing one winning strategy. Our approach comprises two steps, uh, four steps, sorry. In step number one, we transform the specification into an NFA. In step number two, we construct a font planning problem from X, Y, and the dynamics of the automaton. In step number three, we solve the resulting font planning problem using any of the shelf planner. And in step number four, we extract a winning strategy from a solution, a policy, of the font planning problem. So why are we using uh, planning to solve LTLF synthesis? There are several, several um, explanations or reasons, and here I will just comment on two of them. First is that by compiling LTLF synthesis into font planning, 
were able to use the best planning technology at the moment. And the last one is that by casting planning, uh, synthesis as planning, we are opening the door to incorporating action costs, stochasticity, soft goals and preferences into the synthesis model, our approach. So I said already that we are going to compile LTLF synthesis into fully observable non-deterministic planning. So what is font planning? A font planning problem is a tuple of F that stands for a finite set of fully observable fluents, I, the initial state, A, that is a finite set of actions that have non-deterministic effects, and G, that is the goal condition. So solutions to a font planning problem are policies, and here we're interested in two classes of, pro of solutions. Strong solutions are strategies, policies, that guarantee goal achievement regardless of the non-determinism in a bounded number of steps. On the other hand, strong cyclic solutions are policies that guarantee also goal achievement, but these are predicated on a fairness assumption that I will explain later. So just to give you a better sense of what the problem is, here's an example. We have an initial state, we have a goal state, and the plan is just a sequence of state actions. But remember that in a font planning problem, the actions are non-deterministic, so they have non-deterministic effects. And the agent has to plan for every single contingency. Right? We have non-determinism. And whereas in strong planning, you have to guarantee that the goal is achieved regardless of non-determinism, in strong cyclic planning, you are allowed to loop. And it's the fairness assumption that tells you that if you keep on trying infinitely often the same action in the same state, you will see all the effects of this action occurring infinitely often as well. And that's why you are uh, going to reach the goal. Okay, now just remember, we have an LTLF specification, X variables from the environment, Y variables from the agent and a formula phi. We transform the formula phi into a non-deterministic finite state automaton. So how does the font compilation look like? Here I gave you the, the high level intuition. So we are going to simulate the sequential turn taking between the environment, uh, environment player and the agent player. So we are going to split each turn into three different modes. In the environment mode, we simulate the action or the turn taken of the environment. And we do it with a non-deterministic action so that each non-deterministic effect simulates one possible, move of the, of, one possible move of the environment. In the agent mode, we simulate the turn of the agent. And we are going to simulate this with a deterministic action. Lastly, we have a synchronization mode that synchronizes the state of the automaton with respect to the play that has been simulated. And now remember, because there's a correspondence between the accepting runs of the automaton and the plays that are winning, the goal in our font planning problem will be to generate one accepting run of the automaton that finishes and hits one accepting state. In the second part of our paper, we investigate what happens when the specification is not realizable. So we want to get an explanation as to why the specification is not realizable. And for this, we define what is an unrealizability certificate. So an unrealizability certificate is nothing but a strategy for the environment that prevents the agent from satisfying phi. More formally, a certificate of unrealizability is a function g that maps finite histories of subsets of y variables into a subset of x variables. And it happens that if the environment plays according to G, no matter what the agent does, in each time step, the finite play satisfies the negation of bar phi. So what's our approach to solve LTLF unrealizability certificate generation? It's very similar to synthesis. We still have four steps. In the first step, we transform the LTL specification into one automaton that accepts the models of the negation of phi. In the second step, we construct a font planning problem from X, Y, and the automaton. 
In the third step, we solve planning problem using any of the shelf planner. And in step number four, we extract a certificate of unrealizability from the resulting policy. Here are the high level details of the compilation. Still, we are going to simulate the turn taking between the environment and the agent players with different modes. The difference here is that the environment mode is simulated with a deterministic action and the agent mode is simulated with a non-deterministic action because the move of the environment is no longer controllable. We are going to have a synchronization mode that synchronizes the state of the automaton with respect to the simulated play. What the font planning problem has two interesting properties that we didn't have before. The first property is that each simulated play needs to be such that the runs of the automaton need to uh, satisfy, not, uh, need to reach accepting states, sorry. And so when this doesn't happen, the compilation is such that it enforces a dead end. The second property is that we need to generate infinite plans. Well, this is not really an issue. We know how to do it. Lastly, we wanted to investigate how can we uh, leverage the structure of the LTLF formula. We do so by decomposing the formula into multiple subformula in, and transforming each of these subformula into different automata. Lastly, we prove in our paper that our results are sound, complete, and that the complexity matches with the worst case complexity in LTLF synthesis. Let's move to the experiments. In the experiments, we wanted to answer these three questions. First, what's the role of automata decomposition in performance? Second, what's its planning a good approach for LTLF realizability? And third, is planning a good approach for certificate generation? So we took, uh, unfortunately, there's no uh, existing benchmarks for LTLF synthesis. So we took existing benchmarks from infinite LTL synthesis and adapted and extended them to LTLF synthesis. We compared the performance of our method with SIFT, that is the only existing tool for LTLF synthesis. We implemented our algorithms in a tool that we named Syncit, that was presented in a system demo earlier this week. And here are the results. So first, we learned that automata decompositions are necessary to scale. And these are necessary in order to transform the LTLF formula into one automaton. But we also learned that the more you decompose the formula, the more difficult it is to solve the resulting font planning problem. So there's a trade-off there. In the second round of experiments, we tried different configurations of Syncit, performing soft automata decompositions, hard automata decompositions, and a portfolio of all of them. So we learned that different configurations can solve different problems, and there is value in running a portfolio. Similarly, we, we compared the, uh, the coverage of Syncit against the coverage of SIFT. And again, we, we, we discovered that we solve different kinds of problems. So there's value, again, in running a combination of all the methods. In the third round of experiments, we wanted to test the performance of our system in computing unrealizability certificates. However, our system is the only one that does so. So what we did is that we compared Syncit with certificate generation against SIFT, improving or detecting unrealizability. We found that Syncit, our approach, has better scalability in large problems with the additional benefit that we not only detect unrealizability, but we also generate certificates of unrealizability. Conclusion. So we exploited, exploited planning to address LTLF synthesis, realizability, and unrealizability. We introduced unrealizability certificate generation. We contribute with algorithms and an empirical evaluation and examined the role of automata decompositions in the scalability of our approach. 
Lastly, we think that our approaches are a stepping stone towards synthesizing programs for the Internet of Things. In future work, we plan on investigating what's the role of environment assumptions in LTLF synthesis and quality measures. Just to conclude, this is a long road. Circuit synthesis was first introduced in the 50s by Alonzo Church. LTL synthesis was introduced in the 80s by Nueli and Rosner. There was a big gap in which the problem was very well understood theoretically, but no um, good algorithms existed. It happened in 2006 that bounded synthesis was introduced for infinite LTL synthesis, and this uh, started the uh, you know new planning, um, new approaches that were practical started to appear. Finite LTL synthesis, as we understand it, uh, just was introduced a few years ago, and the first, plan, first tools for LTLF synthesis are starting to appear. Just to conclude, our research group has been done extensive work in LTL planning, and lastly, LTL synthesis, also LTLF synthesis, and we are going to present at each guy a uh, novel work in LTL realizability and synthesis via planning. We have tools that solve finite and infinite LTL synthesis, and uh, they are available to you online. So with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, thank you. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. So, for the uh, benchmarks that you worked, uh, can you give us some example of the LTL specifications? Like, are they just arbitrary, or are they trying to capture some some problem, like like some game or something? Yes. So we took uh, benchmarks from the infinite LTL synthesis community. In particular, we tested the set of Lily demo benchmarks that you know the, they think or they say that is like an, a variety of different. I don't know if they are random, but uh, you know they recognize it as a sufficiently um, broad, uh, randomized uh, set of specifications. But they don't try to capture any real-world problem or anything. Not in the experiments can... that we have tested in the paper. <laughs> they are uh, sufficiently varied. And can you go back to the uh, slide with the numbers, with the results? Okay, tell me where? Yeah, that one. So, in problem size, what do you mean? Say it again. In problem size, what do you mean? The number of literals? Yes, no. We took problems from the LTL synthesis community, and it turns out that when you interpret the LTL formula with finite semantics, these problems are very easy to solve for us. So what we did is that we concatenated different problems. One, two, three, four, five, up to six. So these numbers in the horizontal line mean how many problems we concatenated. Each problem has, you know, varies, but maybe four formula, four variables. So doing, you know, a quick math, uh, we are solving uh, six, uh, more than 20 formulae, and also about uh, 50, 20 variables, something like that. Thank you. Great talk. Uh, uh, one of the subtleties, okay, sort of in, in these things, that there are different sorts of non-determinism, right? Sort of uh, the dynamics is a strong, sort of what we call an unfair, and so on. But on the other hand, the uh, automata you can control is what some people call angelic and so on. So in the sort of translation that you do, how the two things are mixed, and, and, and if you can sort of elaborate a little bit on that. Yes. So the translation is such that planning states capture all the runs of the automaton. Mm -hmm. And then the non-determinism that is devilish, that is the one from the environment, is captured via non-deterministic planning actions. Mm -hmm. So it means 
uh, what about strong cyclic solutions? So, so in some sense, you want the strong solutions of the translations or strong cyclic solutions will do? The strong cyclic solutions is the approach that we take for unrealizability certificate generation. Mm -hmm. So what we're asking there is that at each step, time step, the automaton uh, needs to be accepting for some run. So again, the planning states capture all the runs of the automaton and what we're asking is that at any time mm -hmm. there's some run that is accepting. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Okay,